Well, Stephen, with uh, 48 minutes gone there, it was looking like a bit of a Valentine's Day massacre when Arsenal were 4-0 up, but that's Leeds for you. It's always entertaining. Yeah, to be fair to them, they never gave up. I think, obviously, first half, they would have been disappointed, made a few changes, and that gave them a bit more energy, I think, second half. And uh, as you said, they they get back in the game with a couple of good goals. And, um, yeah, it would have been interesting if they had a n- n- nicked one. They had a couple of half chances in the last 15, 10, 15 minutes, but uh, it wasn't to be. I think they gave themselves too much to do, obviously. Yeah, 4 0 down. It's a, an impossible task for most teams. And some of those goals as well were of their own undoing. They got away with one when the penalty was overturned. Ilan Melia then makes the mess for the second, gives away the penalty. Like, when you're asking a team to play out from the mm. back, do you just got to accept that that's going to happen sometime? Yeah, disappointing for them, I suppose. That's the way they play. That's what a lot of teams are playing at the moment. And the keeper needs to be comfortable. He is comfortable. Um, left footed, nice strike at the ball. But probably just five or ten minutes before that, he had that that little scare uh, and never learned from it, which is disappointing. But yeah, these things happen when you're, you're taking risks at the back. You're going you're gonna to sometimes lose them. They were missing Calvin Phillips today. Mm. How big a loss was he when you look at the way the game turned out? Massive, yeah. That's a massive loss. I think if... If, if you're speaking to the manager, I'd say one player you wouldn't want to lose is Calvin, Calvin Phillips, how good he's been for him over the last 18 months in that holding role. What is it? As, as, vital. As, as a midfielder, yeah. what is it that was missing today? He just he, he just needs to play. He needs, he needs everything about him. He, 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 can, he just sends danger at the right time. He gives that energy, he gives that uh, authority to the, the rest of the forward players to, 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 go on, to go on attack and I look after everything behind them. So they just didn't have that today. They didn't have that energy and drive that he usually brings and uh, they definitely didn't get out from the back as much with, with him in that midfield he, he does link the play really well when you go back to the defeat to Manchester United there was a lot of questions about Bielsa and was he naive and even though four days earlier they demolished Newcastle by playing that system that against a certain type of quality maybe you need to change your system when you look at being 4-0 down at Arsenal is there any party that thinks actually as good as an impressive Leeds are being that there are times they, they do need to change it um, no I'm probably well in his camp I, I, love, I love I love his uh, it's not an arrogance it's, it's a more of a his philosophy he just sticks by it and, and, and doesn't come away from it and that, you got to admire that I think anyone that that watched Leeds this year it's, it's entertaining and, and it's enjoyable Um now and again, I do, as you said, give them sloppy goals away. It gives them mountains to climb, but their overall play, they have to be happy with this year. And I don't think they'd be too disappointed, especially sat tenth or in mid-table at this time of the year. And there's not many teams that are four 0 down, and you think yeah. they get a goal. <laughs> they're, they're the team, aren't they? They've the got team. a chance, and they did give themselves a chance in that last half hour of the game. Mm. One player who was to the fore in that last half hour was Rafinha, who has got a lot of plaudits this week after mm. his performance against Crystal Palace. And while Leeds fans will never want to be seen as being a feeder club, but do you look at Rafinha? Of if you're looking at that Leeds team, and if if we call them the top six, the traditional top six as they are now, if clubs are coming in, is Rafinha the one they'd be looking at, or the, who are the other players in that Leeds team that? I, he's, he's definitely won. You can see he hadn't had his best game today, but, but just little glimpses of, of what he can do, what he can create. Left foot, even on his right foot, second half, he's a great strike. I just think he looks dangerous. He can run in behind. He's got, he's really the modern type of winger. He can do a bit of everything. So uh, now I'm sure, listen, as you said, he's at a huge club at the moment, but as you said, them top four or five Champions League spots, them, them big boys come knocking. I'm sure he'll be able to play at that level. Looks a good player. We were mentioning a couple of times during commentary that like we're heading towards 20 years since that great mm. Leeds team you were a part of were challenging for titles mm. and getting to Champions League semi-finals and they've been through some incredibly tough times since then. And whenever a team comes up from the championship you say survival is enough, they're going to survive. Is mid-table an exceptional season? I think so, yeah. I think you have to hand it to them. I don't think... Obviously, the, the few players they are missing, they brought in, they spent a bit of money, but they, they've, they've really gone with the same group that that, that got them in, into the Premier League. So they would have snapped your hand off, I'm sure. The hierarchy and the, the fans t- t- to finish mid- mid-table this year, that, that's a, it's a good season for me. What about Arsenal then? Because yeah. they were 4-0 up after 48 minutes. A hat-trick for Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Coming into this season, almost everything that was predicted for Arsenal was on the basis that Aubameyang was going to get them 20 goals. He came in today with five. He got a hat-trick, first ever Premier League hat-trick. Is there any way of putting your finger on of 
what's changed that he just hasn't been able to do it this season? No, it's tough, isn't he? he he's obviously a great goal scorer. I think his, his record uh, is probably one and two in his whole career. So, yeah, listen, sometimes players go through that where they just have that little bit off, signs a big contract and, and things don't go, go well for him. But he looked bang at it today. I thought from the word go, he was showed great energy, great hunger, which probably was questioned over the last number of months. So maybe this kick-starts him and it gets him back in the goal trail anyway. There was some brilliant attacking play from mm. Arsenal, particularly from the three behind Aubameyang, and they're all young players, Saka, Odegaard, Smith Rowe. I think Saka was the one who, who really stood out. Like, What's his limit? How, how good do you think he's going to be? Yeah, he's a super player. I think it's just his all-round play. He's calm when he gets in there. He obviously direct, he can dribble with the ball, but he, he is calm and he was, he was good at setting up goals. Um, all, all his all-round play is really good, still very young. Uh, England are, are, are strong in, in a lot of areas, but he, he's won definitely for the future and has a massive part to, to play for Arsenal. Very difficult to sum up Arsenal season because mm. they've been so inconsistent in ways. They were unbeaten in seven until the last, the last couple of games against Wolves and Aston Villa. They're sensational at times, mm. yet still it just moves them above Leeds and up to 10th, and they've got Manchester City next week. They've got Leicester coming directly after that. Considering where they were, say, under Unai Emery, like, What's what's a good finishing position for this Arsenal group? They just need to get some consistency. I think it's too up and down Arsenal this last maybe eighteen months or so. They uh, they come into the game today only one win and five. They need to they need to make make more wins, back to back wins. They don't they don't seem to see see many runs out anymore. So um, yeah, I'm sure everyone's scratching their head why and and put, trying to put their finger on it, but. It was only six months ago they were right down the bottom of the league, so um, they they need to to, to try and uh, I think Tottenham are ahead of them in, in that ninth spot or whatever. So they need to just try and work away and trying to get some consistency and putting back to back wins together. Yeah, we'll have that game against Manchester City live and off the ball next weekend. From your own personal point of view, you're back in the day job with Shamrock Rovers again. Four mm. months of hard partying <laughs> after celebrating the title here. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, listen, we're looking forward to it. It's a it's a new year. Um, obviously frustrating um, not having the fans and stuff uh, still back um, in March when we get back on. But yeah, we're just looking forward to it. It's a long off season, as you said. A good year last year, but let's let's try and go go again. How stressful. Is it around a League of Ireland club at the moment? Like you came back to make your livelihood back in Ireland again, and have made big plans with Shamrock Rovers, and have enjoyed huge success with Shamrock Rovers over the last couple of seasons. And you're getting the crowds up, and it mm. feels as though there's a real momentum, not just with Rovers, but with a lot of clubs in the league. And then COVID comes along, and all the weaknesses that are probably there in the league have been exposed over the last year. Again, when you're when you're looking at the players and contracts and whether they want to stay in Ireland, how difficult has it been around the club? Yeah, really difficult. I think. Uh, Everyone knows that our main income is, is the crowds, and when that disappeared because of COVID, um, a lot of clubs are struggling, and we're no different. So we, we all had to look at the budgets and all that sort of stuff, and it is difficult. But um, as you said, we last March we, we had a great game against uh, in Tala against Dundalk, and everything was going looking like the league was was, was going to take off again. Seven thousand in Tala, great night. It's just uh, frustrating, but one. We need to bounce back from everyone needs to get knuckle down, get back playing and hopefully the crowds come back and then the league starts taking off again. And that rivalry with Dundalk, it looks as though it's going to be there again this season. Did you see Pat Hoobin's comments over the last <laughs> couple of days? Yeah, I'm sure uh, he, he's, he's gave us a... Um, that's it's not, it's that, not a real league title after 18 games. Yeah, well, listen, I think Patrick knows who, who was the best team last year and the most consistent team. I think... Uh, He's playing a bit of mind games there, but now we, we look forward to He's giving to Stephen Bradley his, uh, <laughs> yeah, his first yeah. team talk straight away. Yeah, that'll be uh, hung up on the wall. But now, listen, he, he's obviously done well in his career. He's got he's got to recover from a bad injury as well, so I'm sure he's, he's just trying to get fit and trying to get in their team more than uh, trying to try to smoke up our, our side of things. But now we're, we're fine. We're... We're trying to concentrate on ourselves and look forward to having a good pre-season and get back playing. And a different uh, atmosphere around the training ground, I'm sure, with no Jack Byrne being yeah. there this time around. You've lost a, a couple of players. Well, it's not a, a straightforward defence of the title either. Uh, how much are you just looking forward, though, to, to getting that full season? So I don't think there's any questions about yeah. Jammer Grovers. They finished so far yeah. ahead. But actually, just to have the regular rhythm of having a full season again. Oh, yeah, definitely. That, that's what it's about. Listen, it's... 
we want to play every game. Last year, it's just unfortunate we, we couldn't do it. So it's um, now we're looking forward to it. It's just, we've got some fresh faces in, a few lads that have left, but uh, it's a strong group. Uh, the core group has been really good over the last couple of years. So so uh, yeah, we're confident, but we now have to do our work and uh, and and try and uh, retain our title. Yeah. Well, very best of luck with it, Stephen. Thank you. Cheers, Dane.